6,876. That's the number of homeless people in Harris County. They live a hard life. No home, separated from their family, bills mounting overhead. Some struggle with addiction, others struggle to run from the problems which left them homeless. Regardless of these challenges, we believe that they deserve a good, safe meal. How will they get this meal? We have developed an app that distributes surplus food to those in hunger. It is estimated by the USDA that 31% of all food produced in the United States ends up in a landfill. Most of it is like this, surplus from some event, teacher meetings, volunteer meetups, tech conferences. My name is Tomas Gago. I'm Owen Newman. And then we, we are, are the developers, developers for the app Donate, Donate or Deliver. Deliver. We are coding it for technology. I mean, coding it for nutrition, I'm sorry. Here's how it works. You just provided lunch for a staff meeting, and there's 30 Jason Deli box lunches left over. You can notify an organization to come pick up those leftover foods. Um, that is the donate part of our app. Or you're an organization that is dedicated to feeding the hungry. You get a notification that a company has food available to be picked up from a certain position within a designated time, how, however long it takes before the food has expired. Using the map that is part of our program, you find volunteer from your organization who can pick up the food to deliver to the hungry. That's the delivery part of our app. Uh, challenges we face in this project. First off, we had no prior knowledge of how to code, so we used systems like lynda.com and learning how to write, as well as our passion for this project uh, pushed us forward. Um, also, while researching for this project, we learned of a City of Houston ordinance that made it so that the only people who are fit to handle food destined for the hungry are those who have been vetted by the Houston Department of Health and Human Services. And so we've gotten around this constraint by insisting in our terms of service that only organizations rather than individual persons can opt into this program. Uh, moving forward and developing this app, we hope to set up notifications so uh, the delivery side of the app can uh, get push notifications and are notified when you know, new food is popped up and um, for a certain amount of time. Uh, we also were working on writing a line of code that takes all the information that's been stored in the donate part of the app. Uh, this line of code uh, should check the time, the amount of time in the listing and if it's past, if the current time is past the amount of time allotted, it'll delete that from the listing so that it'll, pardon, it'll keep our, uh, it'll keep our database and map clear of excess information. Uh, also, we want to not only do this in Houston, but spread it to other local counties uh, like Cypress, uh, Sugarland, and uh, Katy. Also, we are, we have made plans to distribute QR codes and maps to uh, areas in which people may not have uh, QR code, I'm sorry, QR codes and maps with information leading to local soup kitchens to people who may not have access to that sort of information. Uh, we made a website, uh, that's what the QR codes lead you to, uh, that we made so we can easily uh, spread through social media and let people know of our app. We, uh, we hope to inspire a sort of grassroots movement in smaller towns so that more people can feed the hungry more easily. So uh, no matter the size of the organization or no matter the size of the community, we believe our app can have a big impact in helping feed the hungry. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Cameron Lanza, and with my team, we came up with the app Healthy Eats, and with our slogan, Your Nutrition is Our Mission. So 
So as of 2015, there were 30 million Americans who were um, diagnosed as diabetics, and o about half of Americans who are considered overweight or obese. And the point, um, the main objective was with this app was to um, introduce people to foods that had nutritional value instead of those um, considered junk food or easy access foods, and just bring awareness to that. And also in like my personal life, I see a lot of like my family members, what they eat, and it kind of scared me, like the health risk and the um, <coughs> how it affected them. So trying to change my lifestyle and become vegan slash vegetarian was what drove us to create this app. Our mission is to provide you with healthier alternatives to your otherwise unhealthy foods. And our primary objective is to not only get you looking great, but feeling great as well about your body. The features of our app focus on how, um, how we can make um, shopping for foods a lot more convenient. So for example, um, something like McDonald's, you have a Big Mac, but you want to have a healthier version of that. With our app, you can look up Big Mac, but you can find um, a healthy alternative. Or if you want to find sort of a, a veggie diet to um, fit your dietary um, restrictions, you can find a veggie burger. And our plan for right now is to, is to have it free of charge and um, pr provide a sound, sort of a step-by-step -step process along with nutrition facts for um, each food you select. And um, the reasoning behind um, choosing a lot of these features was because um, in talking to people, when asking them why they decided to pick certain foods, it was because of the convenience of eating things like McDonald's and stuff like that. So we wanted to be able to bring that convenience to people's phones, something they use every day. And um, in design, the first thing we kind of started with was um, graphics. And um, we have a little animation uh, animation here of a prototype that we um, designed. And um, what went into uh, coming up with this was um, minimalistic and easy to use to stay, stay consistent with the theme of um, conveniency. Because again, we want to make it easy for people to eat healthy. Because a lot of times, that's the reason they don't do it, because it's harder. And um, also, it was a, a few other things that went into our design. like. Um, the psychology of colors and you know a lot of social media apps are blue because blue is a color that typically calms and soothes the individual and makes you want to stay on the app longer so um, yeah we kind of incorporated that with like blues and greens because green typically represents nature and things like that and then what ended up happening is after we got down the graphical element then that translated into our, the actual coding of it and how we wanted the app to flow in that regard. So this is the app itself. This is the, the main page where um, you can search your meal. And so if we search Big Mac, for example, and if you're a vegetarian, you click the check mark and you press enter. And that's the screen it'll take you to. It'll take you to the recipe and it'll be step by step. And if you click the ingredients button, you can go to um, the ingredients of the recipe. And whenever you want to leave the recipe, just return to your home screen. And this is the code itself. Uh, the code itself used to be very long, over, I'd say, 100 lines of code. But we were able to shorten it to just 45 through the use of functions, where we saw that repeatedly for every time that you receive like pizza when you enter it here, uh, you had to set screen and then set the home button, as you can see, or turn to home screen. You have to set ingredient button. But that was three lines of code for every single one. So what we decided uh, was a function that was called go-to recipe, which has parameters, single parameters, like it's parking spaces. And um, really, you could label them anything, but we decided to label them recipe title for our understanding. So first slot would be recipe title. And then set screen would be equal to recipe title. So when you call the function go to recipe, the first slot will be set to whatever name you put here. So if it's Veggie Mac, um, it'll take you to the Veggie Mac screen. If it's Veggie Pizza, then it'll take you to the Veggie Pizza screen. And then for the second slot, it's recipe ingredients. So um, it, that button there, whenever you, sorry, um, the second slot would take you to the ingredients for that specific recipe. And after we sent our app to our school, we were able to get some feedback. And in the future, we hope to add a, a calorie checklist and also, as us, as a team, take it to a hackathon event where we can further on our app.
and, and additionally, we were um, if we had more time, and you know. <laughs> so we are uh, Team Thirty Two. We're here under the Code.ia branch, and we're here to present a day in the life and interactive experience. This project was worked on collaboratively by myself, Nick Herrera, Isaac Valentin. Julian Perez. And Annalise Rosenfeld. We had a fifth person, uh, Jasmine Aranda. Unfortunately, she could not be here today. So our purpose. What are we doing? The main purpose of our app is to acknowledge and showcase the complications, life-changing choices, and dangers in our community. Through this, we can stimulate different scenarios in which teenagers, our respective audience, may face in real life in order for them to gain the knowledge on how to handle these situations if they ever occur. Why we're doing this is because we're teenagers ourselves. We want to be able to empathize and understand and show other teenagers what to do in scenarios that might make them awkward or uncomfortable and they know what to do. Planning. Uh, planning out the storyline was the main part of the project. Uh, we wanted uh, to show the users uh, how it feels to be like in a teenager's shoes along with uh, complications. We use a website called Poplet to design our storyline. Uh, and we chose the three different topics, bullying, drug abuse, and assault. Uh, we thought these were the main topics that uh, teenagers face in everyday lives during high school. The technology integration. The problem we wanted to fix was that sometimes teenagers can find themselves in an awkward situation, in which case they may not know how to respond and they just may not know what to do. So we wanted to remedy this situation by creating an app in which case they can uh, be placed in the situations and they can make decisions and see the consequences in a virtual environment where there really are no real life consequences. So we decided to try to convey our message because our audience is teenagers. We decided the best way to convey our message would be through a phone app. So we created our program to run as a mobile app and I will show you that program. Oops. Uh, right now. This is a day in the life. Today we're going to be talking about Lisa's story. Now ever since Lisa was a young girl, she's been bullied. And our story starts around Christmas time. So Lisa has just been bullied by the school bully, Anna. So we have two options here. In this case, we're going to decide to tell a teacher. So she walks to class, she tells the teacher, and after about 10 minutes, she finishes what she is about to say. However, a few weeks later, she soon realizes that no action has been taken. So she's left with one choice. She can either tell a parent or tell the principal. In this case, we're going to tell the parent. So she tells the parent, who then consults the principal and resolves the issue. And that was one of our many plot lines. Overall, what we realized throughout making this project is that coding wasn't the main challenge. It was the hardship of trying to code together, understanding exactly how our community works, and what was the best way for us to implement programming to teach other teenagers. We were scared of the wide range of possibilities we had, and the increasingly nearing deadline wasn't any help. But despite our fears, we truly believe we've managed to create an app designed to help our peers, friends, and family be equipped for the reality of our community. Thank you for your time. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sai and this is Alhaj. Our project is school safety, which is connected to Seoul. The problems in school we have are that students are skipping classes, weapons are brought to school, and students are using other students' IDs and the conflict between students. The solutions are, solutions for the problem is that we invented an app which will show the where you can scan the student's ID, it will show the personal information of the student, like their schedule, and their schedule, like their schedule, and their, if their, their, their behavior, and etc. The school safety survey. Uh, we gave some deans and some teachers a survey about school safety. For the deans, we asked, um, do you have any situations where students were refusing to give their IDs? Most of them said yes, and some of them said sometimes. And the question for the teachers we asked is that do you check the IDs in the beginning of the class? 50% um, replied yes, 11.1% never. Say never. 
this school safety free response, we asked the dean of free response question, was that how do you know the student in the picture is a real student? One of the one of the deans replied by check uh, by check, by comparing the picture to the face, and the other one replied, "I'll check for them if there are stickers or it's blacked out. I will tell them to take them out." So, two of our application. Our application we start right there, where we have an administrator. We start. We have an administrator login. We have an administrator login, a student login, and a view school map. We will start with the admin login. So with the admin login, the admin can actually enter his ID and his password. If the password doesn't work, this will happen. Wrong data inputs, username and password don't match. If it actually works, please type and can you enter the ID? And password, please. So, admin can actually enter the ID number of the student. If he enters it, it will pop up another student page. Or he can um, do the barcode scanner of the student. Obama, can I have your ID, please? Thank you, sir. So we scan the ID of Obama right here. And it will actually give us his name, his picture, his birth date, his grade level, if he's eligible to be in school, and his schedule. Let's go back, sir. Now, let's go to student page, please. The student login. In the student login, the student can enter his ID and his password. We have the perfect scan again, where the student can scan his ID. Can I see your ID, please? Thank you. Here. You are not actually allowed to be in the school. Sorry. <laughs> Can I see your ID? It's the symbolic. Thank you. Oh, you too as well. You're suspended. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back side. And then here we have the school map for new students who does not know the ways they have to go and etc. So we created the school map as well. So we're going to continue with the PowerPoint and show you a little bit how um, we created the barcode scanner. Barcode scanner button with an application with, um, which um, pops up a barcode scan, right? When the barcode scanner button is touched, it will go the barcode scan application that will scan anything. Then after the barcode scanner scans it, it will get a global name and a, and a non global name is Justin Timberlake and Mr. Obama. You are not in there, that's why the message box and the message box pops up. So if it gets this name, it opens another name. And if it gets this name, it opens another name. So we'll go ahead with the questions. Good morning, everyone. The name of the application is called Natural Disaster Safety, and our topic is so. 
My name is Adrian Tavera. My name is Francisco Torres. And we were the designated coders in this project. Unfortunately, our B2 teammates couldn't be here, but they also helped create our app because they were the researchers, designers, and testers. Why we chose natural disasters? We chose natural disasters because of what's, what happened last year during Hurricane Elvi and other natural disasters that have happened throughout the past years. For our research, we decided to look up other applications that we thought would be the same as ours, and we looked up what they did and see what we could do better than them. During our design, we used pictures of natural disasters that have happened in the past few years, and we made it so that our app can work both online and offline. The code we used at the 2 and the code we used was blocks. Okay. When you first open up the app, the first thing you see is four pictures of um, the natural assessment. When you click on one of these pictures, they will take you to a screen with information of what to do during the hurricane. Um, under this information, there will be uh, two buttons, one with um, a, a website that will lead you to, to a website um, um, with more information and a button that will take you to the home, back to the home page. We'll let you check that out if you want to see it. In conclusion, we made our app to raise awareness for people so they will know what to do during a, hur a hurricane or tornado or any other natural disaster that's happening so they, they can know what to do. And we hope to like save, um, save, um, save lives and help people during a natural disaster. Any questions? Or Wait, thank you. You're from Westside High School. And to, due to the recent problems that are occurring within our community and within our state, our nation, we have developed an app in order to help bring our community back together and to uh, create a safer environment for everyone. Um, teenagers these days are very connected by social media, but you could be surprised how many are not. And this could cause isolation, depression, and very high suicide rates, actually. Um, this could also cause violent tendencies, which would start things such as school shootings, which we've had a lot of these days. So in the recent school shootings, such as the one in March 7, Birmingham, Alabama, the one in March 13 from Seaside, California, and the one in March 20th that happened in Lexington Park, Maryland, we've, uh, we've seen a connection between these three shootings. It's they're mainly uh, committed by teenagers. And so uh, what our communities are doing is they're focusing too much on gun control. And instead of, instead of like, and they're not trying to fix the actual problem, which is their teenagers themselves. We're not focusing on our teenagers. Want to try to bring them back into our community because it's more mainly the depressed and like isolated teens that have all these suicidal thoughts and like they get bullied a lot, they don't have any help. They, all of that builds up inside of them and eventually they just snap and they go and do things that they're going to regret, such as the school shootings we had recently. And so here's uh, where my app comes in. I've created this app uh, that's uh, currently only here for Houston. So, map here, it's called, uh, it's just the like, news. And so I have uh, three main sections. The first section is for our, our local school news. So if, we press, if I press on the West at Howard News, it brings up all the recent news from our school. And so through this app, the students are able to see all the activities that we provide in our school. So they're able to like sign up and, like, um, and slowly it brings us back to the community. And it encourages um, teenagers to join clubs and activities which would help build connections and social standings and so then after our local school news, we have the HISD news itself. So through RSS feeds, we're able to access all the, all the news that HISD posts. And it's easily accessible through this app. All the recent news, you just scroll through there and you find what you want. And if you click on it, it sends you to the actual website where you can read all about it. And so through here, also, like not just for local, but all students throughout the entire district can find activities that HISD provides. So they're able to like, go find the community that they fit in so that they don't have to be isolated or alone, they're able to get help. And so 
that was a major uh, aspect of my app. I created an email app, uh, an email uh, function in my app. So basically through this email function, we have a uh, piece of email such as uh, for your school, you have your dean or your principal or your nurse. So if you really need help, you need to talk to someone, this is an easy way to uh, contact them. So I can just press my dean here and I can write my subject such as can we talk soon or something. And then if I press on the body, I could write what I really want to talk about. about. And if I press send, it's just going to take me to my email app. I'm able, I'm able to easily just press send and it's going to send the email straight to them. So there's no hassle. I don't have to go online and like find their email or anything. It's all accessible through this app. And eventually I'm going to update this app so that it has hotlines such as the suicide prevention and stuff like that so that uh, they can have everything just in their fingertips in the app. And so uh, due, due to like the recent events here in Houston such as Harvey, there are also uh, uh, functions for our entire community such as adults so they can like seek help because uh, during Harvey, there were many adults who didn't know where to go to for help, like for support. And so through here, um, I have a button that sends you straight to the Harris County Emergency uh, Center. So here we see all the emergency alerts, and each, uh, Harris County will uh, post anything, like uh, support groups and anything that the community might need in order to get back on track with their lives. And so that's basically the main uh, elements of my app. And so here I have my uh, source code, which basically on this part of the code has showed how I load up my uh, the RSS feeds in order to display the, uh, the app. So it basically just uh, gets the link from the RSS feed and it um, verifies if, it fun if it's uh, online or not. And if it's online, it's gonna display everything on within the app. And here I have the code for the email function, which just shows how uh, it puts everything in the subject field and body field and it connects with the email app and sends it to whoever is going to receive it. And so with my app, I feel that uh, we can create a brighter future for our community and like our teenagers are going to have an easy access to our community itself and they're able to come all together. We're, we're going to be able to become stronger as a community. We're going to be able to develop and like, create better, um, a better community for our future and future generations. And so here are my citations for all the research I've done uh, for depression and stuff, which, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's, hmm. Thank you for your time. Good morning, judges. My name is Christian Forrest, and this is my friend, also one of the creators of this app. His name is U.S. Salazar, and unfortunately, one of our members, person in the house, couldn't make it today, but I'll that we might take for now. Okay, our project is based on community safety and we're trying to better that with these rising problems around the US with all these you know shootings happening and everything we were worried about what would happen if this would come to our school. So what you know everything happening there's about 18 right 18 shootings that have happened this year alone in schools which would be four a month right one a week that we had a threat in our school and we started thinking and you know we really didn't know what to do if that were to happen in our school so basically what we did is well what we did was just follow the procedures that were given to us and we thought to ourselves well this isn't good enough and so our team developed an app which which could help uh, all of us, and not just our school, but many schools around the world, if they incorporate this technology with their schools. And well, what this this is is uh, it's an app that we created, and well, what it does, well, uh, what it does is it gives the administrators the power to say if they see a threat, they push a button. And it sends the school into lockdown. It sends an automatic uh, notification to teachers, students, and all the faculty in the school. And it also sends uh, emergency services to come to the location and assess the problem faster. And also what we would like uh, is that the teachers would also have this power. They would have to guide the students into the safe zones. The students' cell phones and the teachers' cell phones would send GPS uh, locations for, for the police to incur. And that way they would decide how to assess the situation faster and more smoothly. And the thing is that with this app, it's very compatible with systems that are already in play with schools today, like uh, One Roster, Chancery, and Infinity Campus. And we're hoping that 
we could probably make an add-on to that, which could make, instead of uh, adding students one by one, we could use that, their coding, and incorporate it with ours, so it could be less tedious, and more efficient. And well, we would have, uh, you know, displays of what it would look like, but since we couldn't get a laptop, we have the code, this is what it would look like for students. As you can tell, it's simple. It would just tell them, you know, follow the, you know, direct administrator, teacher nearest to you to a safe zone. This would be the teachers. As you can tell, they have more. So let's say they have a situation. They press it. It sends it to the admin. It overrides the admin's powers. It sends the school into lockdown. And it sends uh, emergency services. And they have a map of the locations of what to do. And they have, they would have, um, what to do to help calm students during the situation. This is also the administrators. You can tell it's way more complex. They would have uh, a counter that will tell them what students are safe and what students are not with the GPS location. They will let them uh, communicate with emergency services, and that way it would better the situation and if it were to happen. I think that concludes everything. So. I'm Morgan Locke, and this is our app, Nutribase. Now, a problem we saw today in Houston society is that there's, according to the 2016 census, there's 2 million people in the Houston population. And 26% of these people live in a food desert, and 27% of these people live below the poverty line. According to the USDA, an overwhelming 96% of these people don't have access to fresh food or grocery stores near them. Now, even people who do have access to food or grocery stores near them, only 40% of adults get their daily recommendation of fruits, and an underwhelming 21% get their daily recommendation of vegetables. To solve this problem, our partners and I created the app NutriBase. All right, thank you very much. All right, so as you can see, this is our user interface. Sorry, folks, about the inconvenience. All right, so as you can see, these dots around these locations, they are actually layered in different colors, those are heat maps. They show the amount of food in frequency in Houston where people don't have proper access to food. <coughs> As you can see, and the other variables in a map, those are map icons, like the squares, circles, and triangles, if you pay attention closely. They represent your variables like restaurants, <coughs> restaurants, supermarkets, nutrition sources, and other available areas. Okay, and uh, three, so that's our layer selection tool, right? From that, you can select what you want to see and what you don't want to see on the app. Um, here you have, you have the checkboxes, you check which ones you want to see, which ones you don't. And then our last, uh, our last feature is our information box. It shows the address of the location, our recommended entree, the amount of calories, and the cost of it. Okay, and this is how it works. I'm going to show you how it import works. Source code. So this is the standard import source code for Android Studio. Android Studio is the tool that developed by Google, which we use to create a mobile application. So originally, actually, this app was made on an ArcGIS platform. Have you heard of ArcGIS before? The ArcGIS software company, we allowed to input our database into ArcGIS by which we could create a web application that we imported into our mobile app by the source code. And then we had a couple of technical obstacles, which I'd like to discuss with you. So first obstacle was <coughs> when we try to import an online content into a mobile application, you need to have a particular web view in our activity main class. So that shows the physical features that you add to these buttons, dash or, or other images, etc. That was absent from our program because we initially thought that it could be done by plain coding. But then we had to go and modify the activity main class XML, and then we inserted the web view by which you could see our online content. Okay, so our second problem was when we actually attempted to upload the app to the Play Store. Here we had a problem with the APK file, which is the format that is used for Android applications. So when we so uh, we eventually solved this by renaming the uh, by renaming some of the code and by reconfiguring it. And here are future plans. So improvements include uh, improved UI scaling. Our current version of the app doesn't work very well on some devices because the UI scaling is not so great right now. So that's an improvement we certainly do in the future. Second of all, we have data analysis for better uh, recommendations and information to the people that use the app to see, hey, what do you want to eat? Because uh, they see that a certain person goes somewhere to eat more than another place. And last, but most importantly, we have the offline capability. This will allow more people to access it because not everyone can afford a data plan that, allow, 
so that they can use it everywhere. So this will make it more accessible to everyone. Yeah, some other future prospects we considered is expanding to other major cities within the US, because currently we're only based in Houston, and we feel that we could reach m many more people, millions more people, if we were to expand to Los Angeles, Phoenix, Dallas, Chicago, New York, and other large cities in the US. And another prospect we consider is to expand to the iOS platform, because currently the app is only available on a Android, on Google Play, which uses that um, Android platform. In iOS, we would be able to reach many more people and service many more, more people. And some other, another prospect is collect user data. And we can do this by collecting locational data, which is um, the users could tell us if they know a healthy place that they want to see on the map. And we could also get um, restaurant reviews. So users can suggest to other users um, which restaurants are the best. And also, it, it's a really um, business friendly feature. We could also get user feedback. So users could tell us what features they'd like to see, what features they would not like to see. We could add um, many more things to our app. These are our sources for the database, and these are our sources for the food desert slash insecurity system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would Thank you like you. to post some questions that you have? Uh, yes. Uh, good morning. My name is Renee. Good morning. My name is Elijah. Good morning. My name is Kevin. We're here today to show you guys, show you guys um, our product called Tic Tac Toe. What is Tic Tac Toe? Tic Tac Toe is a, is a we got into, we got into class together to bring to brainstorm to see what what type of what came the game to make. Everybody's a tic tac toe, so we said let's do tic tac toe. Tic tac toe. We want to help special education kids and, and blind people to learn something and, and to play the game, expand their minds too. What is how is it made? Tic tac toe was made with robot CC or robot robot C. Robot C was was given us by HISD that we have to work with. We have robot C on our laptop. So we will go to Robot C, we go and make our own codes. Make codes, so we cover what you think of the codes we, we need. Here are some of our codes that we have. We make different tabs and know what type of codes that we need. We need display, LED, and sound function to make the whole make to make our whole code work together. Here are our two main tabs, the TTT function, C, and our main game. The TTT function holds every tab we have. Display, LED, sound, TTT function, one player one, player two. That's so our holds everything together. And our main game, that makes our, that makes our main game work. And you see us in the green sentences, those are called comments. We put those there so we'll know that which is which, which is which. Problem solving. When we make the code, we might have many errors, misspelled or everything. When we compile everything, we have to go back and, and debunk every code if we can. Split our code right. Applying the code. Once we go applying the code, we want to have everything in order. Syntax. <coughs> we want everything in special. We want to have everything capitalized, it's spelled, it's spelled right, and have everything in order. <coughs> make our code work or flow like that. Sound. Sound will be made either whether someone knows someone else pushing a button, know that they're pushing a the button and make them know if they win or lose or is it draw. Organize we keep we want to keep our code organized, we won't have a mess of code. If we have a mess of code, it'll be harder to go debunk to find what code what type of errors do we have in spell or anything. I'm going to show you how it works, the robot. In so here, you can see we have our flowchart. So first go to the auto programs, it's already, it's already on the robot. So we Basically, here. the flowchart, it'll, it'll okay, show you the process, the steps to get to the game. So first, it'll take you to the welcome screen, and then we'll choose player one, one or player two. And then you go ahead when you do, it'll take you to the game. And when either one game. of you Just click on it, choose it'll win, okay. you can either choose to play again, or you can choose no and go to exit. <laughs> For our conclusion, we hope this impacts students and special education kids and blind people to learn a new game, to learn something new, and, expand, and to think better and think smarter. We hope this impacts everyone. Hopefully, hopefully everyone could try this, this game we have. We're also making on right now our Braille. 
well, it's how about the blind people? So know what, so how to play. Will any allies play TikTok? 